Gilly was the most personable. He would climb up and nibble their ears in the morning and would try to eat their oatmeal. Currently, they have a white toy poodle, Liberty Bell, Libby for short, and Libby is their stand-in daughter while they wait for their human daughter to join them between the 27th and 21st. Please welcome number three speech entitled Tesla Counterpoint All. Um, Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. The genesis of this speech started about two months ago when I was first here. Rolf gave, I believe, your third speech as well, to the point. It was about the environment, and you mentioned during that speech something with Tesla Motorsport, Tesla car, mm -hmm. Tesla car. So it's not the electrical unit, it's not Tesla ring or whatever, it's the car that we talk about. The thing that got me during that, I'm sorry, it's, it's not an attack on Rolf, it's not an attack on his speech, but just something, well he mentioned it, about the zero emissions of this all electric car. The crowd went, whoa, ah, and stuff. And in the back, my mind was like, zero emissions. Like, no, there's no such thing as zero emissions. I had all these things going off in my brain, and I was like, but I was like, nope, this is his speech, it's, it's his floor, so now I'm sure. <laughs> Now, I will say, I'm, I don't believe I'm green. I don't believe I'm an environmentalist. I am a sinophile, and a sinophile, because dogs, we have a dog, and we're going to China, so I we'll cover both. <laughs> but, but I do believe that Mother Earth is not a cesspool that we can spit in and use up to our own will. Something we must strike a balance between. So somewhere in the middle road, I believe. I try to be realistic. And when there is a bold claim such as zero emissions, I want to research it. I want to look into it and see what what is the truth behind it. Is my my thoughts real? Are they made up? Or are they grounded? So I shall share my results with you. Ah, Ooh. she's beautiful. Ooh. I got to admit, <laughs> I wouldn't mind having one of these. But this is the Tesla Model S, and I think you talked about the Roadster or the. There's two versions of them, all electric, and some impre impressive numbers. I mean, she's like a Porsche, or well, maybe not Lamborghini, but pretty good. 5.2 seconds, 0 to 60, a range of a max, about 300 miles. And the cool thing is zero tailpipe emissions. I think you said emissions, and that's what got me going, but tailpipe is something I will be talking more about. But she is definitely a pretty car. Costly, over $100,000. I'm not sure about the different models. Not bad for a, a sporty car. But the envisionment of Tesla was to make something that was efficient, but yet something that you can enjoy and still sporty. You're not, you're not being green and boring. You're being green and, oh, oh yes, I can, I can kick some butt in anyone's race. So. <laughs> but what I want to cover here in this speech real quickly is the different efficiencies, the different uh, powertrains, whatever, the battery. It is battery, and there are three different versions, 160, 230, and 300 mile mm -hmm. range of these electric cars. So what the difference of them is how many lithium ion cells are in it. So lithium ion powers many of our cell phones or our computers. A computer is normally like a six or nine, maybe 12 cell battery. This here, the 160 mile version, has 5,000 lithium ion cells. The higher versions have 9,000. Now, when you think of that, how heavy six cell is, the 9,000 cell battery weighs about 1,400 pounds. So it's not something you can just go, shh, shh. No, I mean, you'd be like, nah. you a couple of people to do it. So I will talk more about the charge and battery swap here shortly. So I was wondering, how do you how do you power this thing? I mean, how much juice does it take? Is it is it going to give out, I mean, I say zero tailpipe emissions, but I mean, what's the real thing? So let me talk about a few different ways of charging this battery. As you know, it takes a while to charge your cell phone or your uh, laptop. Here, there's three different methods. This one can connect into your garage. This one can connect to a laundry receptacle. You know how they look a little bit different and more powerful. And this one here can just plug in any wall plug you see normally. Different rates here, 56, 32, and 5 miles range per hour at max power. So if you plug in your car and it's empty for an hour, you're going to get, you're going to fill her up at a rate of 56 miles. So 56 and 300, about whatever, four, mile, four hours it takes at max power for this thing. For this one, it draws a little bit less current, takes many more hours, 32 miles 
filling up per hour of charge. So as you can see, it's not filling up a gas tank in five minutes, you're done. You could, but it's going to draw a heck of a lot of current, and that's what I want to get to you. The small thing here, if someone comes to your house in one of these and wants to plug into your wall adapter, it's not too bad. They only get five miles per hour and it's charging up. So what's this here? I'm going to go with the max power available. This thing's plugged into your garage. You got to pay 100 grand for this guy, but then you also got to pay 2,000 for that electrical device to power your car. If you look over here, it's going to run double your voltage in your house. Normal mm -hmm. voltage in a house, 110, 120. This one's going to run double that, 220, 240. And if you look here, the max amperage it takes is 70. Now, most people don't want 70. Okay, that's fine. Is that good or bad? I don't know. But it takes four hours to do this. Now, if you look at, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. If you look at some common household appliances, Comparatively speaking, how much is this car going to add or, or not going to add? Is it going to be a television or is it going to be an a AC unit running all the time? So if you look at this, a standard water heater, central AC, well, hmm, that's probably not too useful here in Monterey. Most of us don't have AC. Electric clothes dryer is comparable where the Tesla would be up here. And it's maxing strong, 70 amps. Down here, it's 45 to 35. So this is a major, major addition to your house. I just want to do some quick math. All these are from websites. This is from the Department of Energy. If you're drawing, let's say, a totally empty battery pack in your car and you charge it for four hours, it's going to be 72 kilowatt hours. That is a lot considering in one month, in 2008, the average household draws 920 kilowatt hours. So this is a lot of energy that this thing is sucking in. And if you have to fill up your car every day, if you're drawing 300 miles a day, you're going to draw about 1,000 kilowatt hours, which is going to double your consumption of electricity in one month. It goes less than that, of course, if you drive, drive less than your top line. Finally, since I'm running out of time, this is the distribution or consumption of electricity in the United States at different rates. Coal and natural gas and petroleum consist about 75% of our consumption of energy, and all of those are greenhouse and medium gases. So, over time, it will become better as we increase this renewable sources, such as wind, solar power, and others. But for the time being, the zero tailpipe emissions still must get powered through the electrical grid, which is 75% powered by CO2 emitting gases, or uh, fuel sources. Does so that to wrap up this perfect timing? What I've learned in this thing, it's not an attack again on Rolf. What I've learned is an efficiency and also our sources of power. As renewable sources become more, I believe we must become more efficient in our use of power. And I will say Tesla is a very, very grand step in that case. And it's done where you can have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Being efficient and driving a wonderful car. That's what's best.